He was very transparent. I don't know that there was a single question that was asked today that he didn't answer and answer fully, which is unique. Uh, uh, and, and what we do know is, is there was definitely no quid pro quo. I mean, it's, uh, it came out over and over. It was asked probably uh, 20 different times. All right, well, the Republicans and Democrats clashing over yesterday's closed-door interview with former U.S. envoy to Ukraine, Kurt Volker. He handed over dozens of pages of text messages showing him and other diplomats arguing over whether President Trump was pushing Ukraine to investigate his political rival. Join us now, Republican Congressman from New York, Lee Zeldin. He's a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, which means, Congressman, you were in that room yesterday. What was your biggest takeaway? Well, first, I didn't know Ambassador Volker before uh, yesterday. Uh, I, was, I knew who he was, but I, I had not met him before. He came across as candid, a genuine. Um, he was very well versed on uh, Ukraine and, and years and really decades of background here. He knew all of the players, the pronunciations uh, of their names, even the spelling. So I, I thought he was a great witness. He answered all questions from the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, and during that, I mean, he basically put a dagger straight to the heart of, of Schiff's fairy tale impeachment story here. Uh, with, with regards to the quid pro quo, as you just played from that, uh, that piece from, from Mark Meadows, he heard what, what I did as well. Uh, and, and basically just destroyed, blew up that How narrative so? with every answer he gave. How so specific? Okay, uh, uh, so where to start? So uh, for, for, uh, I'll give you one example. So uh, first off, you know, the, the allegation that Ukraine would be uh, providing uh, some type of assistance with regards to an investigation or return for security aid. They had no idea that there was even a hold on security aid at the time of that call. As a matter of fact, there was a lot of interaction with Kurt Volker that took place in the weeks to follow uh, the July 25th uh, phone call between the two presidents. So sorry, and, and uh, Ukraine wasn't who's bringing they? it up. Who's After they? When you said they had no Ukraine. idea. So uh, Ambassador Volker was in pretty regular contact uh, with uh, the Ukraine government. Uh, he has relationships with aides uh, to President Zelensky. He actually met with President Zelensky right after uh, the July 25th phone call. In the readouts that he received after the July 25th phone call from not just the United States government, but also from the Ukraine government, Ukraine had no idea there, that there was any type of a hold on security assistance. It wasn't brought up. There was no concern about a quid pro quo in any way, shape, or form. Well, they knew uh, that but, they didn't and then, have those you know, funds. They, with, they knew they didn't have those funds yet, though, Congressman, correct? Uh, they raised no concern whatsoever uh, that the, there was no uh, belief, uh, there was nothing expressed that, that funds were not going to be received. As a matter of fact, they're very grateful because not only was there approvals uh, over the course of this year, they were expecting money, uh, but there was also going to be additional funding in order to provide lethal okay. weapon systems that uh, the past administration wasn't willing to provide. So the readouts, the meeting with President Zelensky, uh, and then the follow-up, uh, the weeks that followed in all of the interaction that Ambassador Volker had with aides to President Zelensky, they had no idea that there was even a hold on. on including the these uh, this September 9th text messages, uh, which I know that you have had a chance to look through and read yourself. This is between Bill Taylor, the top American diplomat in Ukraine, and Gordon Sondland, the U.S. ambassador to the EU. Taylor suggests in these that the president was holding back the package of military aid to Ukraine as a bargaining chip to influence Ukraine to investigate the Biden, saying, quote, as I said on the phone, I think it's crazy to withhold security assistance for help with a political campaign. Sondland then replied, Bill, I believe you are incorrect about President Trump's intentions. The president has been crystal clear. No quid pro quos of any kind. Why then was Taylor making the suggestion uh, that there was going to be the withholding of that aid by the president until an agreement was made on behalf of Ukraine to investigate the Bidens? Well, first off, your, your question highlights exactly why the transcript from yesterday should be released, not just... Uh, drip by drip, released selectively, cherry picking which texts to provide uh, to the media and the American public. The transcript of yesterday's several hour long uh, interview would be very great context here. Bill Taylor wanted uh, aid to be provided to Ukraine. He believed in the mission, as did, as did Ambassador Volker, uh, and did others in the United States government. They wanted the aid released. And, and what you saw from uh, Ambassador Sunderland immediately shooting down any type of 
uh, speculation as to why there was a hold. Uh, Ambassador Volker testified yesterday uh, that that even they did not they were they did not receive the reason as to why there was a hold placed uh, at that time. Uh, but what, but as soon as that suggestion, that question, that speculation was made, it was immediately shot down. There was I mean the president made it crystal clear. Uh, to other representatives who were part of this text exchange, that there was no quid pro quo. That is not what the situation was about. But Bill Taylor, the top American uh, diplomat and, and that's why in that Ukraine, was shut down. seems to suggest in that text. And correct me if I'm wrong. How do you see it? I think it's crazy to withhold security assistance for help with a political campaign. So somehow. He was led to believe that there was a plan to do just that. Does that concern you at all? One, one, uh, one, once again, uh, it, it, this is another reason why that transcript should be released. And I, 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 it, the great, a great opportunity right now for Adam Schiff to provide uh, to the American public to form their own independent uh, decisions and judgment is to provide the transcript. So one of the things that came up during yesterday's uh, hearing are, are the different meetings that took place with the President of the United States in the Oval Office. Meetings uh, that took place with Ambassador John Bolton, with his counterpart in the Ukraine, and, and who were who was in that room, and, and you know, you, Ambassador Volker was in that room time and again, uh, and you had you know, okay, with, with Secretary Perry might be in, in one room. Before and, we go, uh, sure. and we're short on time here. Pompeo, should he comply with today's subpoena deadline? Should he turn over those documents that they are demanding? If he wants to, that's fine. I mean, what, what I'm hearing, the, the, the right move here and, and something that the administration is seriously considering doing is forcing the House to take a vote. Process-wise, yesterday, we weren't able to get staff in. Uh, Chairman Schiff didn't want to allow members to ask questions. He was discouraging it. Uh, we should have a vote in the House. If they want to have an impeachment inquiry, I don't believe that, they, that we should have an impeachment inquiry. But if they want to have one, there should be a vote. There should be minority rights. There should be subpoenas from both sides. The president should be represented by counsel. He should be able to present evidence. If they choose to comply you know, today, that, that's, uh, that's fine. But really forcing the hand of the House, I think, is the right move here. Got it. Congressman Lee Zeldin, appreciate your time this morning. Thank you.